So in this class, uh, we will discuss uh, about the basic uh, concepts of uh, grid floor. So a grid floor uh, in plan it looks like this. So you will have so many panels. So the entire thing is called as the slab. So this is the slab portion. So so many panels it consists of. So those panels normally they can be of rectangular shape or uh, square shape. So the shorter uh, uh, span is denoted by Lx, longer span is denoted by Ly. And this is the cross section. So if you take a section here xx, uh, it looks like this. So it consists of a slab portion at the top. So this is called as the topping, you can call it as topping. So thickness of slab is is your topping. And uh, a portion of the slab acts as a beam. So in between, uh, we are going to provide the beams. So this is the spacing. So spacing of the beams. So those beams, they will act as T beams. T beams because they are constructed monolithically. So both the slab and beams, they, they will be constructed monolithically with same uh, uh, grade of concrete. So M20 and M25. So that uh, shape may be like this. So in plan, if the these panels, if these panels, if they are of rectangular shape, then it is called as rectangular orthogrid. Orthogrid because they are running in perpendicular directions. So both the panels are running in perpendicular directions. If the dimensions are equal, if this is this equal to this, then they are called as square orthogrid. Sometimes uh, due to architectural purpose and all, they may provide diagonal grids also. So this is an example for diagonal grids. In the case of diagonal grids, uh, you can have uh, uh, a rectangular shape or you can have a triangular shape or any other shape also. So these are the different types of uh, uh, grid uh, floors in plan you can see. But anyway, we will discuss the design of uh, square uh, orthogonal uh, grid beam here, uh, grid floor here. So they are constructed monolithic with uh, closely spaced uh, intersecting beams. So these beams will be intersecting. So they will be running in both the directions, both along NY and LX direction. So we have to provide reinforcements uh, in both the directions. It is nothing but like a two-way slab. So it is nothing but a design is nothing but a two-way slab. Simple design only. So they are also called as ribbon slab or wrapper slab or wide slab because concrete is removed here. So you can see that uh, there is no concrete here. There is no concrete here. So it, it will save concrete. That is another advantage. So if you want to avoid uh, major beams in any hall, then you can go for the grid floors. Hmm? So grid floors consist of uh, small, small beams. Grid beams are very, very small compared to your uh, major beams. So that is the advantage. That means in our system, what happens? So usually, whatever the concrete is in the tension zone, it won't take any load. So compression, uh, concrete is strong in compression, steel is strong in tension. That is why we are going to provide steel in the tension zone. And only if it is doubly reinforced, then we are going to provide steel in the compression zone also. So, but normally when sagging bending moment uh, develops in any beam, uh, so top will be compression zone, bottom will be tension zone. That you have learned. Uh. So that means whatever in tension zone concrete is there, that is extra concrete. For strength requirement, it is not needed. But anyway, for stability, we are going to provide it. In this grid floor, you can avoid that. So there is no concrete here. This is hollow portion. That means this much of concrete you can reduce. The amount of quantity you can reduce. So in that way, uh, this is uh, economical. And now then, there are some specifications we have to follow for the design of uh, grid floors. These are some three four important points. Spacing of the beams. So that's what I told. This is the spacing. Spacing of the beams normally it is kept to 0.75 meter to 2 meter. So that is the spacing. Depth of the beam. So this depth, this depth of the beam. This is the depth of the beam. This depth of the beam is taken normally 1 by 20 to 1 by uh, 25 to 1 by 20 of span. Span means the LX. Usually we take LX span. Hmm? So then of course it depends on the loading. If the loading is more, usually the loading is uh, 2 kN per meter square, 3 kN per meter square like that on slab. Hmm? So then afterwards we are going to multiply that by 1.5 factor of safety. Adding, after adding the dead load and live load, we are going to multiply that by the partial safety factor 1.5. Then only we are going to calculate the moments and all. So if the load is more, then you can go for 
1 by 20. If the load is less, you can have 1 by 25. So what normally we do is we calculate both. And in between, in between value we are going to take it as the depth. And normally width of this beam, width means this, this is the width. This is the width, bottom width. So this width of the beam is usually kept 1 by 3 to 1 by 4 of the depth. But in our RCC, regular RCC beam, normally depth is taken twice the width. Is it not? So 230 mm by 450, 300 by 600, like that we are going to provide. But here it is not like that. So 1 by 3 to 1 by 4. Then another thing is width should not be less than 1 fourth of rib depth or 65 mm, whichever is more. That means normally width is not uh, taken less than 65, it is taken more than 65. That is the idea. So these are some important points you have to remember. So this, there are two methods of analysis and design in the case of drift force. One is the IS4 method and another one is grand time graph method. One formula is there using that formula you can uh, do the design. So let us see what are the what is the difference between those two methods. Because they may ask in the exam either IS4 method or they may ask uh, grand time graph method. In one paper they have asked for this, in another paper they have asked for that. That's why, of course, once you get the moments and all, then design procedure is same. Using SP16, you can directly get the percentage of steel and uh, assuming the diameter is more, you can calculate the number of bars and all. In the case of beams, uh, we calculate number of bars. In the case of slab, we calculate spacing. Is it 8 mm, 10 mm diameter bars? You can assume in slab. Spacing you have to calculate. In the case of beams, uh, usually 16 mm, 20 mm diameter bars are going to assume. Number of bars you have to, you are going to calculate. That's all. So in IS456-2000 method, these are the uh, specifications we have to consider. Spacing normally is not greater than 1 point. That means maximum spacing. Here he has given 0.75 to 2 in general. But if, when you are using IS456 method, spacing should not be taken more than 1.5. Then depth of the beam, excluding topping, excluding topping is this one, this portion, including this, it should not be greater than 4 times its width. Okay? And width of the beam should not be less than 65. So minimum we have to give 65. So 70, 75 like that you can provide. Then the design moments are calculated by using moment coefficients. So the same thing uh, we are using in the case of design of continuous beam also. So table 12, 13 I have mentioned in that video uh, for the 3 span continuous beam. For uh, moments it is 12, for shear uh, coefficient it is given in 13, table 13. In, uh, in, in your code book, uh, uh, table 26, uh, it gives the moment coefficients for grid, grid flow. So you have to remember that. So table 26, uh, which uh, page you have to refer. Uh, table 26 and which page you have to refer. So that's all. Once you get the moments values and shear values, maximum shear, maximum moments, you, if, if you get that, then uh, you can calculate the reinforcement. Hmm? So here you have to calculate the two reinforcements. One along shorter span, another along longer span. For the slab, for the beam also you have to calculate the reinforcement. There are two things here. One, we have to provide reinforcement for the <coughs> top slab here. Top slab. Another one, reinforcement you have to provide for the beam also. So grid floor means it consists of two parts. That is one slab design, another one is even design. So now in grand time crash of method, what uh, he has done is, this is the slab that are flow, grid flow let us say, the LX and LY are the dimensions, short span, longer span dimensions. I am going to take a strip here. So this is a strip one. Strip of small width. Okay. So let us take Q1. Q1 is the load intensity on the strip AB. That is in shorter direction. In longer direction, another strip we are going to take and uh, the loading in another, that direction is Q2. So Q1 is the load intensity on the strip AB that is along the shorter span and this is along longer span. This is along LX. This is along LX. Okay, now I will take the ratio of LY to LX as R. One is let us say 6 meters, another is 4 meters. So 6 by 4, 1.5, R becomes 1.5, like And this total load Q is given by Q1 plus Q. So when you are designing this lab, you have to take the total load. Now, if you do the analysis, only you have to remember this. So this Q1, and this of course they have learned by taking the maximum deflection 
uh, along this uh, span and along this span separately. And what the assumption is, deflection remains same along both these spans. That is the criteria is they have assumed here. So to get this, this equation, what uh, the drying line has assumed is deflection of slab along both spans is equal. They are equal or are equal. Deflections are equal. So if you use that uh, equation of deflection and you, if you equate the deflection along this span and deflection along this span, finally you are going to get this equation. Anyway, you are not worried about the derivation and all, but you have to remember this. Q1 is equal to Q into R power 4 divided by 1 plus R power 4, where R is Ly by Lx. If it is a square slab, then R becomes 1. Correct? Huh? So then Q1 will be equal to Q2. So Q2 is Q divided by 1 plus R power 4. Once you get uh, these two values of Q1 and Q2, maximum bending moment is calculated using this formula. Q1 Lx square by A equal Q2 Lx Ly square by A That is M1. So maximum bending moment along shorter span along this direction is Q1 Lx square by A equal Maximum shorter span along this longer direction is maximum moment along longer direction is Q2 Ly square by A. That is UDL formula. WL square by L1. So same formula we are going to use. So then for this moment, we are going to design the reinforcement. ASTX along X direction. And for this moment, we are going to design the reinforcement in Y direction. That is, that we can do using the SP16. So directly we can get. And maximum shear force is given by these two formula. Normally shear will be very less in the case of slabs. Slab only shear karmel. Beam only sharp slab will karmel. So uh, this is of course for the beams. So for the beams, maximum shear force Q1 Lx by 2 in the shorter span, Q2 Ly by 2 in the longer span. We have to design uh, stirrups. In the case of beams, we have to design stirrups uh, for these two values of shear forces in the beams. That means totally a grid floor consists of two components. One is the slab component, another one is the T-beam component. Okay. So that is one thing. So these are the specifications we have to use uh, for uh, dimensioning the uh, grid beams, uh, depth, uh, width, uh, all those things. Then two methods are available, IS456 method and uh, rank line method. So in IS456 method, we are going to use the moment coefficients. Moment coefficients which are directly available in the table 26 of IS456 to get the maximum values of moments and or, or it is called also called as design moments and for the design moment we are going to calculate the reinforcement. In the rank case method, so we are going to calculate Q1 and Q2. Q you will be knowing. Q is the total load. So this Q is the total intensity, load intensity on slab. Total load intensity on slab. So actually total load intensity, what are the loads you have to take? Dead load, dry load, finished load. Correct? So all those three we have to add, then multiply that by 1.5, that is your design rule. So for, after getting that, uh, these Q1 and Q2 values, find the values of Mx and y, My, they are the maximum bending moment values along x and y directions, and later on calculate the reinforcements for those values using using SP16. So this reinforcement is calculated directly using SP16. If you are using the uh, uh, IS 436, you have to solve an equation, equation for AST. That you can avoid uh, if, you can, if you are using SP16 directly. Tables are available. Then you can design the stirrup for uh, taking care of the shear force in the TV. So, this is the uh, design step for involved in design of grid form. So, next class uh, we will uh, discuss about the design example.